Well, welcome back. Uh, what we have is I'm going to go through an example of how to write a Riemann sum or write the Riemann sum as a definite integral. Um, you see this a lot in AP tests and also it's good basics of where Riemann sums come from. And as we know, Riemann sums, Riemann sums, counting areas of rectangles whose width gets small, we need to count them all. All right, so we have all these little small little rectangles going along a value. And what we want to do is we have a base and we have a height. Okay, now if you're familiar with Riemann sums, all right, let me get this right here. Um, what you're familiar with Riemann sums is that uh, what we have is um, a definite integral is defined by the integral, which means sum. This is the Roman sum. It goes from A to B of f of x dx, okay, f of x dx. And now when we look at a Riemann sum, this is a right Riemann sum, all right? So generally when you give a Riemann sum in this form, this is known as a right Riemann sum. And what we want to write this as a definite integral. This is a definite integral right here, okay? So this is the definite integral. I'm going to, I'm going to line it twice. All right, and we're looking for a right Riemann sum. All right, and to do this, the first thing is, well, we have delta x. Well, delta x is like our dx, all right? That's like our dx. And so the thing is that we have to identify, all right, first, what is f of x? What's our delta x? Because that will help us figure out a and a bunch of other things. So um, we have right here, this is what delta x is going to be, because this is delta x free call is going to equal b minus a over n, b minus a over n. And if you see the 7 over n, that is going to be our um, delta x. So what we have delta x is going to equal 7 over n. All right, I'm going to change my little thing right here. All right, this is going to equal 7 over n. Okay, now, the thing is, is that we can also identify different things because a right Riemann sum is we're going to be taking our function and we're going to be placing a plus i delta x's inside of it, okay? And that's how we write our Riemann sum. So it's be b minus a, which gives our delta x over n, all right? And that's delta x. And then we have our Riemann sum. That is the basic form of that. And we take that limit to n going to infinity. And so that basically says we have an infinite amount of rectangles. So looking at this, we can see that, okay, where do we start? Oh, look, we have natural log, natural log of the quantity 3 plus i 7 over n plus 5. Well, right here, this appears to be the value that we're plugging inside our function. Oh, okay. So what does this value have to be? Well, this has to be our a. This is our a. And this right here is our delta x times i. All right. Well, that helps us out a lot because from this information, we can take and we can fill out some other information because 7n then, because that is delta x, is going to be b minus a, a is 3 over n. Well, if that's true, then what does b have to be? Well, b, if we're going to get 7, all right, has to equal 10. All right, b is 10. Okay, so solving for b, we can see that b equals 10. b equals 10. And so we have b equals 10, we have a equaling 3, we have um, now what is our function value? Well, knowing that we take this out, we can take this out of here, we have natural log of x plus 5. And so we can finish off our Riemann sum, our definite integral Riemann sum by taking this. We can go a, which is 3, to b 10, all right? And from here, I know I'm going to have a natural log, my function is natural log of x of x, because I'm going to place that with that, plus 5. I'm going to put this in parentheses because all that is inside the natural log. And we're going to put our dx. Our dx is our delta x. All right. And that, my friends, is our definite integral coming from this Riemann sum. So key things you have to identify. Identify the delta x. All right. The delta x in this formula. All right. Delta x is b minus a over n. Okay. That's how we can use a Riemann sum of right, midpoint, and left. All right. Uh, from there, we can write this out. Then next is identify the a value, the a value, the lower limit, the lower limit. From find this lower limit, we can see by looking inside the function, what is being added, how is delta x being added, where is this being added several times into the function. Um, right here, we can see that, and we say, oh, 3 is a. Using 3 as a, plug it into the delta x formula to figure out the subinterval length, 
and we realize that b is 10, solve for b. Take out all the 3 plus i delta x's, or a plus i delta x's, and you can figure out then what is your equation. Bada bing, bada boom, you have your definite interval. Well, I hope this helps you out, and good luck and God bless in the rest of your problems.